you have about two different articles, mm -hmm. uh, one set in Ohio and the other one in Texas. Uh, has to deal with abortion. Uh, Paul, what's going on, man? Yeah, I like that we, we're bumping up gun control and abortion right next to each other, right? It's the, almost the as if they're connected <laughs> yeah. somehow by like a religion or something. Yeah. These Ooh. special interest groups. The very narrow sort of left versus right debates in the United States. Anyway, um, I noticed some odd things uh, this week. Two different state legislatures making moves on anti-abortion legislation. Uh, so I wanted to talk about Ohio first uh, because they actually were able to pass this and it was uh, signed uh, by the governor. So this is actually going to take effect. So it's a controversial bill uh, which bans abortions for many women uh, for many women who don't even know that they're pregnant yet. So it's it's the heartbeat bill. So up until the point where the fetus has a heartbeat is the only time period in which you could have an abortion, which for most women uh, that comes in about the six week mark. So that's again before most people would ever know that they're pregnant so it's effect it's an effective ban on abortion so john Kasich, uh, before this w refused to sign this uh the heartbeat bill uh, but he's no longer uh the governor um so that th this is now moving forward so state representative michelle lapour uh, is a democrat who cried uh, as she talked about the harm the legislation could do during wednesday's house debate she said I'm concerned that our kids are going to leave, that we're going to lose a large amount of young people who don't want to live in an, an, an oppressive atmosphere. Um, uh, this is what, uh, so Janet Folger Porter, who was behind the first version of the Ohio legislation said in 2016 that we literally craft this legislation to be an arrow in the heart of Roe v. Wade. So it's made to come before the United States Supreme Court. There, hoping that there will be legal challenges, which there are already legal challenges to this, so that they can run it up to the Supreme Court and uh, use this as an attempt to overturn Roe v. Wade. I don't know or think that will be successful. But why don't we talk about Ohio before we get on to Texas? Yeah, so I want to say something on this that is, it's always fascinating to me how the Republican government, I always want to make sure I make the distinction between Republicans and the people that are elected, very different. I'm talking mm -hmm. about people that are elected, are so keen on keep government out of my guns, keep government out of my soft drink, keep government out of my car regulation, keep government out of housing regulations, keep government out of my bank regulations, but I wanna stick my fist up every woman's vagina. I gotta say, it's really twisted, and it's never been anything but insanely twisted how people that can claim that they want small government uh, want every woman's vagina to be regulated by them completely, utterly, thoroughly, and don't want freedom. Yeah, you know, there, there's another thing to add on to this, too. It's that you're infringing on a person's choice. And, you know, before even abortion was made legal here in the United States, women would do it themselves, where they go to a, a more of a shady location to do it, and it would cost them their lives sometimes, yeah. man. And All you're doing yeah. is trading clinics for coat hangers. Yeah. That's all you're doing. And why? Why are we doing this? Because it's about power. It's about ego. And Because this yeah. old book that's a few thousand years old says I should life a certain way. And I'm only going to read these parts. I'm not going to read the parts about shrimp. I'm not going to read the parts about mixing fabrics. But this part is very important. And don't forget the part two in the Old Testament where God was apparently defeated by another God. Yeah, well, yeah. we don't talk about we, that. We don't, that don't that was, remember, we're not, remember. Oh, shit, I said it. <laughs> I said it. And I like to <laughs> say that for people that don't want to interpret the Bible in the way it's written, you're heretics by definition. I'm just pointing that out there. Yeah. Yeah, I, if we were going to talk about religious background on this the only place in the bible that explicitly talks about abortion is explicitly in favor of it it yeah. is instructing if you end up with a, a slave that is pregnant by your child it instructs you to give her the bitter medicine and if the child is born then it was god's will that you have that child and you should take it under your household and if that child is not born then it was god's will that the you not have that child that's yeah. the only place in the bible anywhere that it explicitly talks about terminating pregnancy i actually yeah. and it's explicitly in favor of it i had a i had a, a sticky note i couldn't find over there that has, actually has that passage numbers 11 i it's yeah, numbers it's something it's, yeah. it's numbers passage, something yeah. or other yeah but see it, it seems like the person who wrote that book really had some fucking issues yeah. but anyways well no Paul, they were they were all Texas. they were all people that rep represented the time that they existed and when they existed back then there were reasons that are different now but we shouldn't adjust our morality based on situation where people didn't know how to read 2000 years ago mm -hmm. to make decisions in America the most advanced wealthiest country in the history of the world yeah. so, so this caught my Texas. eye too the reason we're talking I don't usually like to bring up abortion 
bills and abortion stuff. That's not really my main beat, but it just caught my eye that this both was of super these things, ironic. Yeah, this is really hypocritical and ironic, and it was weird that both of these things happened this week. So uh, a Texas bill has not been signed into law yet, but um, it was up for long debate on Thursday, and it's a Texas bill that would make uh, abortion from the time of fertilization. So even before what the Ohio bill is, the heartbeat bill. So from the time of fertilization makes it a capital offense, which just reminder, Texas in a capital offense is a, an offense, a felony that carries the death penalty. So, and it's, a, it's a, an offense both against the woman who has an abortion done and against the doctor who, who provides the abortion. So what Texas is saying is, we believe that any fertilized egg is a human and has full rights and sanctity to, to life. And so if you deprive that group of cells its right to life, we're gonna murder you and the doctor that helped you. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you kill one person that we consider a person, mm -hmm. We're going to murder two people. For every one person that has an abortion, we're killing two people. It's an yeah. eye for an eye, except wow. one it's, of the things doesn't have any That eyes. is extremely pro-life. Oh, wait, it seems pro-death. Uh, like I said, this is what I said before, so I'm going to go back to, because we're living with people that think that this is these are reasonable <clears throat> bills to put out. I say that because, again, those same people have no qualms when we and our bombs blow up pregnant women in the Middle East. So, I, again, I would go back to what I said before. The clear solution to this depravity is just right before you do an abortion, you just name the, the cells an enemy combatant, and they should have no issue with it. And it would be consistent with how they care about pregnant women that get blown up by our bombs. So I think that's an easy solution. And I, I, a yeah. couple of other things that are important to point out about the Texas uh, law is that because they're defining it as from the point of fertilization, that leaves open the question of so is birth control no longer allowed is the pharmacist what if who you sells you birth yeah what if it's a miscarriage right so is it so there's no provider in that case we're just no going to murder the mother yeah. who happened yeah. to Th have and a that's miscarriage. happened before that's been historic that they've put women who have had miscarriages in prison for having miscarriages right yeah. but also my point earlier the egg can be fertilized but not implanted yeah. that's how birth control pills work right does that mean oh, the pharmacist that sold you the I birth see. control bill is guilty of murder. But what if you took the birth control pill but weren't sexually active? Are they still guilty of murder? Do we now have to prove that someone was sexually active and it resulted in a fertilized well, cell? So many questions. I'm sure these legislators at Texas have the right scientific understanding to figure that out. It, um, Remember, Texas, live free, except if you're a woman and you don't want to have kids. Yeah. It's, it's super duper ridiculous. I always point out when we talk about abortion that I, I really liked the, the point of view that Freakonomics took on this. It ended up both in their movie and in their first book that we, we very rarely get uh, some kind of historical case study, but we have one in this case. So when Roe v. Wade was passed in, in the seven, not passed, when, when the Roe v. Wade decision came down in the 70s, um, it effect, effectively legalized abortion in the United States. At the same time, Romania felt that it was having a population crisis and required that all married couples have at least one child. So forcibly, by law, saying you must have children. So you've got one country who's artificially attempting to inflate its population while the other co country is allowing it to regulate its population on the individual discretion of potential mothers. Mm -hmm. So what ended up happening? So the 90s roll around and there's a steep decline in violent crime. And everyone's saying, oh, well, it was a decline in the crack market. It was increased policing measures. And a couple people went, you know, it's about 18 years since Roe v. Wade was passed. It seems like potentially a lot of unwanted children who would have grown up in households that didn't give them adequate care didn't grow up to then join gangs and become criminal members of society. Mm -hmm. At the same time, there was a massive spike in crime in Romania, where it's odd that there were a bunch of unwanted children required by the state who grew up in households that didn't give them adequate care and potentially grew up to be criminals. That's about as close of a historical case study as anyone could ever ask for. But, yeah. but Paul, when you thought about that really thoroughly and used case studies, did you pray to confirm it? Yeah, and not to mention, did you read the Bible and then the Constitution <laughs> later? Huh? Yeah, did, you, did, you, did, you, did you read my, I had my a pocket Bible? Right to not have a religion. <laughs> oh, wow. No, you're wrong. This is a theocracy. Yes. Or the, many people are trying to get that to happen. Yeah. Um, I think that I think I just want to kind of close out all this by saying. 
Uh, this is a stupid argument based on ancient traditions written in a book that only became a point of contention after this court case was made when people thought that they could successfully, and they were right, uh, get certain groups of religious people to feel one way and act like a voting block on a wedge issue, very similar to guns, which is why we don't talk about these issues that often unless something like this happens and it's worth mentioning, because the entire conversation to begin with was politically split. There wasn't a huge issue with people wanting to buy guns or not. There there wasn't the same schism with guns as there was with abortion until people realized that they could take advantage of a schism that they created to get votes. So really, uh, fuck politics on this. Let's do this correctly and not put people's lives at stake because of dumb reasons. So, all right. We're going to move on. Hank's back. Yeah, but we're going to read a quote from Hank. Uh, if unity and coming together is a good thing, then how can religion, which divides us, possibly be a good thing? More people have died in the name of God. True story. Yeah. Hey everyone, did you like that video? Well guess what, you can hit the subscribe button, hit that ring bell notification so that way you're updated when we upload new content to our YouTube channel.